Hey everybody, welcome back to Just Playing Chris's Workshop. I haven't done one of these in a while, and today it's an update on a project I've been working on for well over a year, and it's a scratch-built A7 Corsair. It's, uh, it's pretty big. Wing is up there, basically done, ready for a little more filling and then some paint. The uh, fuselage, upside down on the bench now, is pretty big, as you can see. It's a Jetworks plan that I enlarged 150%. Part of it is 3D printed, and part of it is, you know, the rest is foam. It's got 3D printed ducting and tailpipes and little things like at the control surfaces and some wood here and there. The thing that's been difficult is it was designed to be much smaller and hand-launched, and I had to do it bigger and make it with landing gear so the entire landing gear design and assembly has been all my design and done from scratch. So the mounts are designed in CAD and 3D printed, and then there's some wood as well. The struts are a combination of items from like Motion RC and steel wire and 3D printed. The wheels are 3D printed. The tires are craft foam that I laser cut and glued together. Nose gear is from, uh, I don't even remember, some plane, some jet that had dual tires and then I had to make a new axle and printed the wheels and made the tires. The real challenge has been the stupid gear doors. So what I ended up doing, they're sprung open and you can see there's a, it's easier to see down here, there's a torsion hinge that's done like the hinges for uh, control surfaces on discus launch gliders. So they're sprung open, same, same thing on the top here, and on these, and then they're pulled closed by this almost invisible piece of monofilament. Right now it's just temporarily in here, but there's a little hole drilled, and there's a knot, there's a hole drilled down here, and it's just held on with tape on the other side, which sometimes slips so that they don't close all the way. For the video, you know, I won't be surprised, but... Once I get the length and the tension where I want, I'll just put a drop of CA on it. And I found out that CA and monofilament love each other. It sticks like crazy, like crazy glue. Huh. Anyway, enough yammering. Let me show you how this works. Uh, the nose gear is not plugged in because I haven't worked on its closing yet, but here we go on the mains. There we go. Doors are shut. This one I'm going to use a little bit of heat, I think. I think it, it has warped a little bit since I made it. Or maybe I just don't have quite enough pull on there. Then they open up. So my concern kind of is whether the airflow in flight is going to try to close this and get in the way of the landing gear door. I guess the only way to know is to fly it and find out. But for now, I'm pretty jazzed. This has been a, a long time coming. And that makes me happy. So that's about all that's going on with this project. I've got uh, a new helicopter toy. This is a Tron 7.0 Advance. She's big. And no, the canopy is not stock colors because the maiden flight went terribly wrong. I'll put a link in the video description of the maiden and the remaiden video. Um, yeah, the, the V-Bar Neo failed 53 seconds into the flight and it went in and broke to the tune of $200 worth of parts, not including blades or the canopy had I decided to replace the canopy. Instead, I just, I'm good with fiberglass, so I repaired it, shot it in white, and then did vinyl for the orange and black. And it's very visible. It's very simple. I like it. And the helicopter flies fantastic, so I'm really, really Happy to have it, and it's a beast. Even though it's the same 700 blades compared to the uh, Piuma, it flies completely different. It's it's awesome. And uh, that's about all that's been going on, except, well, I won the Dumb Thumb Award, or the Blunder Award, we call it, at the club, for the RV-8, which, as you notice, is a different color since the last time I shot a video in here. That's because I was doing knife edge lower and lower and ended up catching a wing and cartwheeling it and tearing the crap out of it. So 
When I tore it all down and glued it all back together, I decided I was sick of the orange paint scheme, so I did a pseudo warbird scheme. It's got the, the black and white stripes on the bottom of the wings, and it looks okay from this distance. When you get close, it's pretty rough, but it still flies great, and I don't care. It's, it's my basher, and it's been bashed plenty. So that's about it. I just wanted to bring you all up to date on what's going on with the A7, and there'll be more video on it as it gets closer to being finished, and hopefully a first flight this year. Take care. We'll see you in the next one.